Wyoming Representative Liz Cheney is facing a tough GOP primary, that's putting it mildly, against a candidate backed by former President Trump. This primary occurs next month. This Republican, Liz Cheney, however, is receiving campaign contributions from what might be regarded as an unlikely source, Democratic donors, even with ideological differences, sometimes profound ones. Donors like LinkedIn co-founder Reid Hoffman are banking Cheney. For more on this, let us bring in political strategist Dimitri Melhorn. He is co-founder of Investing in U.S., could also be read as Investing Us. He'll tell me which. And he's an advisor to Hoffman. So, Dimitri, in an article in The New York Times last week, you said Cheney is, quote, the most important politician in America right now. Are you an outlier among Democratic advisors slash donors in that camp? I don't know if I'm an outlier, Major. I'd say that um, the donors who are longstanding Democratic donors maybe uh, view Cheney as someone who's an enemy, but uh, Democratic donors who got very active because of the specific threat uh, that occurred over the last few years, uh, they back Cheney, I think, overwhelmingly. And they see in her not an ideological comrade, of course, but someone who's standing up for something larger, right? And in that sense, that largeness of the issue of the fate of American democracy supersedes all sorts of well-known and entrenched ideological differences, true? That's right. If you imagine that there's someone who refuses to peacefully concede power, and that's what we're talking about, the refusal to peacefully concede power, either in 2020 or, frankly, in 2024 or the future. If you don't stand up for that, then everything else you care about goes away. And Liz Cheney agrees with us on that. She believes that that is the most important thing, to ensure that rule of law-based elections have outcomes that are peacefully respected, because otherwise the people in charge get to decide how long they stay in charge, and we know they'll pick things we don't like. So how do you see this playing out? Because I can imagine those who are challenging Congresswoman Cheney would say, you see all her money's coming from outside of Wyoming. Oh, not only that, it's Democratic money, that that could create a possible blowback problem for Liz Cheney politically. I'm sure you've done some calculations on that, whether specific or just anecdotal. How did you come down on that? Well, it's a fair question. Um, Liz Cheney has already made the decision that she is not going to campaign politics as usual. She already refused orders from her, par her party and her party bosses to shut up about this. And so she has decided to build a coalition of anyone who wants to be with her, and that's been us uh, for a while now. Now, uh, the Republicans who hate her is it possible they hate her more? Maybe. I don't know. Um, but we can't do anything about that. Right. And you you raise a good point. Those Republicans who consider her an apostate Republican or, in the common terminology of former President Trump, a rhino, already are there. And so you're trying to add value at the margins. And that gets us to sort of a tactical baseline question. Do you believe at the margins money, which— there's only a certain amount you can spend in Wyoming. I mean, let's be honest. It's a media market that is on the less expensive side of the continuum. There's only so many voters to outreach. There's only so many buses and things. Do you believe at the margins this money makes a tactical difference on the ground? Uh, it's unlikely to make a big tactical difference on the ground, uh, in part because— um, as you said, there were, for example, in 2014, there were about 110,000 Republican votes in the general election. There were about 100,000 Republican votes in the primary election. You know, Cheney's already raised 10 million bucks. <laughs> and uh, in response to that question that you asked about whether it's from Democrats, I mean, her fundraisers, she has a Rolodex with the entirety of the Republican establishment. She is the conscience of the Republican Party. Most of the money she's getting is uh, from those Republicans. We just want to indicate that we're supportive. We'd hope that this support would give her at least a chance because it's a signal of us valuing her. If our brand is bad for Wyoming, maybe it hurts. But all we can do is, is indicate that we support her. So I'm going to ask you a kind of a question that's for the now, but also for the later. There are some Republicans who look at Liz Cheney and say she's clearly playing the long game. Even if she loses this Republican primary, she's not going to exit the stage. And she could be someone to take on former President Trump in 2024. 
Is this support and is this advocacy essentially a one-off situation? Or could you imagine Democratic donors siding with her in that contest should it arise in 2024? Well, Major, as you know, and as you reported, uh, a lot of the future of American politics depends on the coalitions that form. And one of the things that we've learned from uh, researching the history of um, anti-democratic movements in Europe is that you do need to form a coalition that spans between people on the left like Jamie Raskin and people on the right like uh, Liz Cheney. And that is the coalition to defeat fascism. So major over the long term, it, the question is, how long is this a threat? If uh, people who want to end the peaceful transfer of power in the United States and change America from what it's always been into something different, if they're around as a political force for a long time, then yeah, I could see a long-term alliance with people like Liz Cheney. Even though we disagree on everything else, when that is at issue, that's the oxygen for everything. Nothing else matters. Dimitri Melhorn, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Major.